will be a video demonstration on media preparation on our broth, butt, slant, and butt slant. First, we will be needing our test tubes. In this video, I have four 10 ml test tubes with cotton plugs. Also, we will be needing our pasture pipette for dispensing. Here, we also have our Bolton agar in a glass jar, our broth, but in this video, I will be using water, and of course, our alcohol lamp. We will be needing a slightly elevated surface. In this video, I am using two lengths for proper positioning of our test tubes. Starting with our slant, we will be needing our molten agar and our test tube. And also, since we are going to autoclave this, we do not need to aseptically open and close our test tubes. Carefully dispense your molten agar onto your test tubes. Take note that when dispensing, it is best that your pipette is held diagonally and will touch the sides of your tube. This is to ensure that no droplets remain sticking to the tip and bubbles are avoided. For demonstration purposes, I am working away from the flame for you to be able to see the proper dispensing method. For our slant, we can use our thumb as a reference to know that 3 to 5 ml is dispensed. At this point, you may insert your cotton plugs and autoclave it. But for this video, I will be showing how to position your tubes. Carefully position your test tube on a slightly elevated surface. Since we are preparing a slant, we want to make sure that our tube is slanted as much as possible. Next, we will be preparing our butt slant. This time, I am going to work near the flame in order to ensure aseptic techniques are observed. Here, we will be dispensing in the same way as we did with our slant, but with a slightly increased amount of agar about 5 to 8 ml. After pipetting, your test tubes should look like this. Now carefully position your tube on a more elevated surface in order to make sure that we have our slant and our butt in one test tube. Next, we are going to prepare our butt. Now for the preparation of our butt, it will be the same with the other test tubes. We pipette about 3 to 5 ml of our molten agar. Once you have your desired volume, which should look like this, you can now place your test tube on a rack. This time, we are going to prepare our broth. For our broth, I recommend using a different pipette due to its different consistency. First, we will need our 10 ml test tube, pipette about 3 to 5 ml of our broth. Once you have pipetted the right amount, you can now place your broth onto the test tube rack alongside with your butt. At this point, you may insert your cotton plugs to all of your test tubes. And now, they are ready for autoclaving. Once autoclaving is done, position your tubes properly with the clay plugs on and allow the molten agar to harden. Your slant should have enough surface area for you to perform smearing. Also, your butt slant should have a slant and a butt that will allow you to smear and stab. For your broth and butt, you may place them on a test tube rack. And that is how you prepare your culture media in the test tubes. This time, I will be demonstrating on how to prepare our agar plates. The equipment that we will be needing will be our Erlenmeyer flask with a stopper, and of course, our molten agar. We will be working near our lamp and will also be needing our Petri dish. I advise you all to be working near the edge of your table in order to assist you later on when pouring. 
Starting by opening the stopper with your last two fingers, hold your flask by the mouth and pass it through the flame about two to three times. Make sure that your plate is flat on the table. Slightly open your plate and gently pour. Then we aseptically close our flask and our stopper. We then gently swirl our plate to distribute the agar evenly. As a reference, it should look like this. The agar is filling half the size of your plate. Set aside to cool and harden. You may now repeat the process to all of your culture media plates. And that is how you prepare your agar plates. Here, I will be demonstrating how to properly handle and sterilize our inoculating loop, inoculating needle, glass light, and cover slip. Right here is an inoculating loop. To properly handle your loop, hold it with your thumb and first two fingers as if it were a pencil. To properly sterilize the loop, hold it at an angle through the flame. Take note that it should be at the middle of the flame and not at the tip. Now wait for the wire to turn orange or red from the heat before you work your way upwards. Make sure that you have sterilized your loop all the way up until the shaft. Allow the loop to cool for a few seconds before you place it on a rack. Now right here is an inoculating needle. To properly handle our inoculating needle, we will hold it the same way as we did with our loop and sterilize it still at the middle of our flame. Wait for the needle to turn red hot before working your way upwards. Once the entire needle has been sterilized, allow it to cool. And now, it is ready for use. Now to sterilize our glass lights, we will be needing our forceps. This is to ensure that our hands are away from the flame. Now to sterilize it, pass it through the flame about 2 to 3 times. Repeat the process to sterilize the cover slip. And that is how you aseptically handle and sterilize these equipments. Here, I will be showing you how to aseptically open and close our culture media. For our plate, the Petri dish is actually designed to have two plates. One plate is much larger and the other one is smaller. On a surface, we normally place our Petri dish on an upside down position. To properly handle our plate, hold the base with your three fingers and your forefinger and thumb on the cover. This is to facilitate the opening and closing of our Petri dish. Remember to only slightly open the cover and always work near the flame. To aseptically open our plate, slightly open it. Pass it through the flame two to three times, and with our sterilized loop, perform your streaking, and again, pass it through the flame two to three times to aseptically close it. Again, to repeat the procedure, slightly open the plate, pass it through the flame two to three times, streak, pass it through the flame again to aseptically close it. Now this time, I will be demonstrating on how to aseptically close and open our test tube. So to start off, using your pinky finger, grab your cotton plug and pull it up. Pass it through the flame two to three times and perform any streaking or stabbing. To close it, pass it through the flame again and aseptically place your plugs. In cases wherein you have two test tubes, Slightly hold them apart from each other. Using your pinky finger, 
grab your first plug and the second one with your ring finger. Carefully pass them through the flame. And to close, make sure that you insert the plugs back to the tubes where they belong. In instances where you are using a screw cap, aseptically open it by still using your pinky finger and rotate the actual test tube. Pass them out through the flame two to three times and perform any procedure like maybe streaking or stabbing and then pass it through the flame again to aseptically close it. Make sure when doing all these procedures, you are working near the flame. And that is how you aseptically open and close these materials. I will be demonstrating on the proper transferring of sample from broth to broth and broth to plate. Right here with me are two broth tubes. For you to distinguish easily, the red tube is where we will be withdrawing our inoculum and the clear tube is our sterile medium where we will be transferring it. Remember that when holding your two tubes in one hand, slightly set them apart from each other. With your other hand, hold and sterilize the inoculating loop. Make sure it is in the middle of the flame and wait for it to turn red hot before working your way up to the shaft. Once completed, allow the loop to cool for a few seconds. We then aseptically remove the plugs of our tubes and pass it over the flame about two to three times. By inserting our sterilized loop into the first broth, we remove a loopful of inoculum. Gentle agitation can also facilitate this process. Now we transfer the inoculum to the sterile medium. Again, gentle agitation can be done to facilitate the transfer. Once completed, we aseptically close both tubes and make sure not to lay the loop down. Instead, we sterilize our loop before placing it on a test tube rack. Now the transferring of our sample from broth to broth has just been completed. This time, I am going to demonstrate how to transfer from broth to plate. By holding our broth on one hand and our inoculating loop on the other, we first sterilize our loop until red hot. Once completed, we then aseptically open our test tube, pass it over the flame, and insert our sterilized loop into the test tube. Make sure that you remove a loop full of inoculum. Aseptically close the test tube and remember never to lay down the loop. To transfer, we then hold our plate on one hand, slightly open the lid, pass it through the flame, and streak the loop on the surface of the agar. You may do this only on the top portion of your agar. After transferring, we then aseptically close our plate by passing it through the flame, and remember to always sterilize your loop before putting it down. And that is how you properly transfer your sample from broth to plate. I will be demonstrating on proper smear preparation. Starting with the labeling of our slide, here with me is a unfrosted or regular slide and a frosted slide. When labeling, make sure that you include the type of sample you are preparing, the date for today, and the initials of the medical technologist. I have now completed labeling all our frosted slides. To label our unfrosted slides, I will need a labeler. Make sure to input the exact same details with our frosted slide. I have now completed labeling all our unfrosted slides. So right here in front of me are slides that are ready to be smeared. I have prepared three slides. One for our swab sample, another for our thin liquid, and one for the coiling of our AFB. Here is a photo of what our slides should look like when labeled. 
Now this time, I will be smearing our swab samples, thin liquid, and coiling for AFB. Remember to always work near the flame. Since I do not have an actual swab with me, I will be using an inoculating loop. Make it a routine to sterilize your loop before proceeding on to your next step. The next step is getting our sample. Remember to always aseptically open our test tubes. Considering that this inoculating loop is a swab, we gently press it on the sides of our test tubes to remove the excess. Then aseptically close your tubes and return it on the rack. By holding our slides on one hand, we gently roll our swabs onto the slides. Perform this on the topmost part of your slide from left to right. Repeat the process of rolling your swab in the middle and bottom part of your slide. Also, I will be doing this to both the frosted and unfrosted slides that I have prepared. Take note that in this video, I am using an inoculating loop instead of an actual swab. Once finished, always observe aseptic techniques. And that is how you properly smear your swab sample. I am going to prepare our thin liquid next. Your thin liquid should be placed on a beaker, glass jar, or test tube. With our inoculating loop, we start the procedure by sterilizing it. Once finished, we then get our loopful of inoculum by slightly tapping our loop. For the smear preparation of thin liquids, we just carefully tap our loop three times. First, second, and third. I will be applying in the same manner to our unfrosted slide. Again, remember to sterilize your loop once you have completed the procedure. Next, for the coiling of our acid fast bacilli, make sure you do not skip the step of sterilizing your loop. Afterwards, get a loop full of your inoculum and start doing the coiling on your slide. To do the coiling, perform tiny circular motions Starting from the outside circumference of the circle, working your way towards the inner until the center. Take note that you should follow and be within the 2x3 template. I will be repeating this to the unfrosted slide. Your circles should not be too far nor too close from each other. After sterilization of your inoculating loop has been completed, your smears are now prepared. Be demonstrating and proper streaking techniques to culture media tubes and plates. We will be starting with our butt test tube. Since we are going to stab our media, we will be using our needle for this. And to start the process, we first sterilize this needle. Once sterilized, we allow the inoculating needle to cool. And given that we have already transferred our inoculum, we aseptically open our tube. After so, we gently stab our media. Take note that the needle should not touch the bottom of the tube and that there should only be one stab line. Once completed, aseptically close the tube and never forget to sterilize the inoculating needle. Now the next media we will be utilizing is our slant. Your slant should generally look like this. Once you have that with you, grab your inoculating loop on the other hand since we will be streaking. Again, before anything else, sterilize your loop at an angle on the flame. Once the loop has been sterilized and allowed to cool, we then aseptically open our tube. Now we gently insert our loop and starting from the bottom, we do streaking all the way up until the top. Once completed, we aseptically close our tubes, insert the plugs, and never forget to sterilize the loop. Now this time, we will be using our button slant. Generally, it should look like this. 
having a butt and a slant in one single tube. Since we will be stabbing, we will be using our inoculating needle for this procedure. Again, sterilize the needle, allow it to cool, and given that we have taken our microorganism, aseptically open your tube. After doing so, we first do the stabbing on the center of the butt, followed by the streaking on the surface of the slant. Once completed, aseptically close the tube by passing over the flame, insert the plug, and sterilize your needle. And that is how proper streaking to culture media tubes are done. This time, I will be demonstrating proper streaking techniques to culture media plates. Starting with our multiple interrupted streak, grab your culture plate on one hand and your inoculating loop on the other. Now let's start by sterilizing our loop all the way up until the shaft. Once completed, allow the inoculating loop to cool. Aseptically open your plate by passing it through the flame. Afterwards, we first do our streaking on the first quadrant. Take note, only streak one-third of the plate. And do not forget to aseptically close the plate, rotate it, and then sterilize the loop. After sterilization and cooling of the loop is done, aseptically open the plate and start streaking the second quadrant. Take note that it should only be the first streak touching the first quadrant. Repeating the same process, we aseptically close the plate, rotate, sterilize the loop, and allow it to cool. Now before proceeding to our third quadrant, still we aseptically open it, Touch a single streak on the previous quadrant, followed by the rest of the streaking. Now repeat the previous steps before proceeding to the fourth quadrant. Now this will be the last quadrant. By aseptically opening our plate, we touch a portion of the third quadrant and create greater streaks this time. After completing, remember to aseptically close our plate and sterilize our loop before putting them down. And that is how you do a multiple interrupted streak. Now this time, I am going to perform the multiple overlap technique. Now technically, you will be using a swab for this. But for this video, I will be using my inoculating loop. So there will be no need for us to flame considering that this should be a swab. By starting with aseptically opening the plate, I will touch the center of the media and from there, I will be creating a cross. After that, we will do our first overlap by streaking from the very topmost of our plate all the way to the bottom. Now aseptically close the plate, rotate it, and repeat the process to create your second and third layer. Once you have reached your final overlap, rim the sides of the plate at least two times. After such, aseptically close the plate before laying down and you may dispose your swab at this point. And that is the complete procedure for the MO. Now here is how to perform the grid streak technique. Given that this is a calibrated loop and we have already taken a loop full of our sample, we first aseptically open our plate. After such, we place our sample on the center and create two lines, upward and downwards. We then create streaks that are far from each other. Here, I am doing about five streaks. Then aseptically close to complete the procedure. But take note that there are different modifications for this technique. So this will depend on the standards of your laboratory or institution. Here is one modification where as if I am making an S.
And that is how you perform the grid streak technique.